Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Padner, and today we have the new FX DRS Classic in 22 caliber. So the DRS is FX's latest new kind of platform gun as they do with all things. There's some modularity built in here, but as you can see, this rifle has a very unique look and that is largely attributed to this over the barrel air cylinder. And we've seen them do this already with the Panthera and some of the other dynamic series guns. But the DRS takes that to kind of a new level. Like this is made to look like a firearm and it does that quite well. Uh, but let's dive into the details. This is a really interesting gun with some interesting nuances that are a little bit of a departure from some of the other FX guns you guys may be familiar with. Now before we dive deep into these details on the DRS, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, do all the things. We appreciate it. Helps keep us going here. Now, as for the gun itself, we have the 500 millimeter barreled version here. It is available in 600 and 700 millimeter variants as well. 177, 22, and 25 calibers only right now. Now, this 500 millimeter version is a very short, compact overall gun. 500 millimeters is about 19.6 uh, inches. The gun overall, I believe, is right around 36 and a half inches overall length with no moderator attached. Uh, so this is a compact, nice little squirrel getter, uh, small game gun. It's gonna fit those rolls really nicely. Now, starting at the front of the gun, we do have half 20 threads under this cap here, uh, and that just screws off. You'll see me add a moderator later because the gun out of the box is pretty darn loud. Uh, I can't speak for the six or 700 millimeter versions in terms of loudness, but this 500 millimeter version definitely packs a bit of a bark, and that's okay. We know how to moderate that. Now, moving on back, this is kind of the, the meat and potatoes of the gun as the air cylinder is over the barrel. So this big diameter thing here is all air cylinder. It fills to 230 bar and it's about 208 cc's. Now here's the interesting thing. When you get a 600 or 700 millimeter barreled variant of the gun, you are obviously going to get a larger air cylinder to accompany that. So they're different sizes, which is going to yield different shot counts, of course, for all three sizes. So something to keep in mind if shot count is important to you. Now inside of this air cylinder, obviously your barrel's housed in there, your barrel system. This is going to feature the Superior Smooth Twist X barrel the some of the 700 millimeter variants are going to feature the slug favored uh, superior heavy liner so something to keep in mind there if that's kind of your end game you want to get to slugs you're going to want to go with the longer 700 millimeter variant as it's going to come out of the box ready to kind of do the thing if you want to sling some slugs but moving on back this is really the the heart of the gun obviously the breech block now what you'll notice here that's different from many other fx guns there is a single gauge on the gun we do not have a second gauge there's no red gauge here um, and actually that is because the regulator is housed at the front of this block but hidden within the stock now of course this is an amp regulator so it's adjustable but you do need to remove the stock to get to it so if you want to make those changes that is something you're going to have to do uh, and there is no gauge for it so you can actually add a gauge there's a threaded hole there that you can stick a gauge into basically and adjust with the gauge to get your reg set just the way you want it but quite frankly out of the box these should be coming quite well set up for those of you that are looking to shoot pellets or for the 700 millimeter versions slugs now on the breech block you guys will notice on the left hand side here we do have a pressure gauge again this rifle fills to 230 bar as you see it here all the variants out of the box are going to fill to that 230 bar it's about 3300 psi fill pressure and they do so by way of a fill probe now this probe has a quick disconnect built onto the end of it which i really appreciate from fx and there's a corresponding hole within the stock you can see it here you just slide that fill probe into and you are good to go. You can actually leave it in there if you prefer so you don't lose it or something like that. And it's not gonna fall out. It's a fairly tight fit within that, uh, that fill port hole. But yeah, easy to fill system uh, and keeps the overall profile with it removed, obviously very sleek. Now, while we're on the subject of this breech block, another thing you'll notice, which is a departure for FX, there is no exposed hammer spring adjuster. That's because it is actually built into the back of the action. But again, like the regulator adjustment, if you want to go that route, you just need to remove the action from the stock. It's one screw, not really a big deal. But like I said, it's a little different compared to FX's other guns that are out there. 
Another uh, little odd gripe for those of you that actually read these owner's manuals. I know a lot of you don't, but they do put a lot of time and effort into these to make sure you have the information you need. It does say in the owner's manual, the max fill pressure is 250 bar. The actual gun says 230 bar. This is an important distinction. The reason I bring it up is because there is a version, I guess a, a carbon over the barrel cylinder that they have kind of on the cards for later. It's not out yet, but at some point down the road, we'll probably see it that will have that higher 250 bar fill pressure. So my assumption is that is why they have that in the manual, but don't let it confuse you. Also in the manual are going to be the details on how you go about adjusting that regulator. Uh, if you need to degas the gun, things like that. So definitely read that manual before you go and start messing with stuff. That's my uh, word of advice to those of you at home. So a few more details to cover here. The breech block does have an 11 millimeter dovetail on it. Uh, the DRS Pro version, kind of the PRS specific version of this gun, will come with a 30 MOA pick rail that is also going to be available as a separate accessory. But the DRS Classic models, both the wood and synthetic, will come out of the box with a non-drooped straight 11 millimeter dovetail rail. Uh, we actually have Picatinny mounts mounted on this with some uh, 11 millimeter inserts. So something you can do if you prefer uh, Weaver Picatinny style mounts in general and you already have them on the scope you wanna use. We've got a Hawk Sidewinder 4 to 16 today mounted as well. Uh, you can see with that 50 millimeter objective, we've still got just a little bit of clearance between that and the air cylinder barrel system. Uh, the gun is a side lever action very smooth, easy to operate. You just pull it straight back like so, and then you can load in your magazine, which loads just like so. You push it on through and that is all good. We'll talk about the magazine in more detail here in just a second. Now the side lever on the DRS is right hand only. It is not reversible. You can see just below it, we do have our safety switch. We can close that up, flip that back and forth. Nice hunter style safety, very easy to use. Uh, with it on fire and open, we can actually decock the gun. You go ahead, hold that back, pull the trigger, and now it's all good to go. We'll set that back to safe. The trigger itself, nice. Uh, obviously, FX does a great job with their triggers. Uh, this out of the box, very nice. I've got no complaints, but it is two stage adjustable. You can also adjust the blade to kind of whatever position you want. So you have multiple adjustments for this trigger system, which is very nice to see. And on the bottom, you will notice you've got kind of what looks to be a box magazine. Uh, this kind of aids in the overall rifle look of the gun, in my opinion, uh, but this is actually your plenum. And one of the cool things about the DRS as a platform is that this is a modular plenum system. So this is an 11cc plenum, really purposed sh to shoot pellets. You're not gonna be able to push a lot of slugs as fast as they're gonna wanna go out of this particular configuration, but if you do down the road, you can take this plenum off, obviously degas the gun and all that stuff, and add on the SHP or super high performance, I think, plenum. It's 67 cc's of volume compared to this 11 cc's of volume. So a huge increase in terms of that plenum volume gonna give you a lot more power. There are a couple versions of the DRS, both the Classic and the Pro, that are gonna come out of the box with the Pro or the SHP Plenum, uh, that 67cc Plenum factory. So keep that in mind. I believe the 700 millimeter versions all come with that as a standard. So you are gonna have that protrude a little bit more and give you more of a uh, kind of longer box mag look. Now our classic stock, you can see this looks really good in my opinion. I, I really like the looks of the gun. Uh, this is a soft touch stock, so you've got that nice grippy coating that FX does on a lot of their stuff. But if you are a traditionalist, you can do the walnut stock version as well. And if you are going to be diving into PRS or something like that, or NRL 22 air rifle competitions in the future, or you just like the look of it, the Pro has an MDT chassis on it, which is just, Chef's kiss, it's dope. Now, on the topic of the magazine, the DRS comes with what I will call a mini magazine. This is 16 rounds in 177, 14 in 22, and 12 in 25. This is a lower profile magazine than some of the other kind of standard uh, dynamic magazines that are out there uh, that'll fit any of those other guns, but it's made to keep your 
scope height low. You know, they don't want to give you this beefy magazine that you have to use high mounts for, especially when it looks like a hunting rifle. You know, they want you to keep that scope low to the bore. Uh, so that is why this has the smaller magazine. Now, if you do jack your uh, scope up, I suppose you could use the, those larger magazines if you already have them for another FX gun. But uh, with that said, same side shot system that we've seen before. You are going to take this tab, rotate it around, and remove your cover plate. Now, one thing to note about the cover plate uh, and the magazine itself actually is that they've hogged all this out to give you the room to load 40 grain slugs in the 22 for those of you that are going to be shooting slugs maybe in the 700 millimeter version but to load the mag from there very very simple we'll drop down here you rotate the cassette around until your stopper dead ends there you're going to put your finger to cover up the through hole in the magazine that first slot you drop a pellet in you let that go and now you are held under that spring tension and you can go ahead and load the rest head first and once we get our last one in there we're just going to take our cover plate put it back on rotate the tab to lock it up and we are good to go shoot. So one other thing to mention here, the stock is ambidextrous. You've got a raised cheek piece, which is the same on both sides, rubber butt pad at the back. Uh, overall, I really like the look and feel of this gun. It's just over five pounds without a scope. So very lightweight, very easy to carry around. Uh, I, I'd be curious to hear what you guys think down in the comments below of air rifles that look like real guns. I know it's kind of a hot topic for a lot of folks. Personally, I don't mind it. Um, might not be my favorite, but I think this is really well executed. I've seen others that don't quite look this good in the past, but I think FX has really nailed it on the looks of this gun. But more importantly, we need to see if they nailed it in performance. So let's head out to the range and see how the DRS Classic does. All right, so stretching the DRS to 45 yards, we added the moderator as I told you we would, so you can see it there. We'll take it off for the sound testing, so just know it's gonna be a fair bit louder than what you just heard. Um, most of the pellets we tried in pre-testing kind of look similar to this Predator GTO group, just under an inch, 0.875. It's not a bad group, but out of a $1,000 gun, you definitely expect better. So JSB 1813s, 0.625 uh, for five shots. JSB Hades, the same, 0.625. So solid groups, but holy cow, a 3 8 inch group out of the JTS 22 grain pellets. This is fantastic. Uh, and exactly what you would expect out of a $1,000 gun uh, and what we've come to expect out of the FX brand name and those Smooth Twist X liners. Now, we gotta take those 22 grain JTSs over the chronograph and see what it does. And we'll run it through the trigger and the sound test as well. 
So with those JTS 22 grain pellets, you are looking at about 42 shots from a 230 bar fill, which is full for the gun, of course, down to about 115 bar, which is where we fell off the regulator. So fair to say we're set about 115 bar. Now your average velocity over those 42 shots is 791 feet per second uh, with a standard deviation of just 2.6 feet per second and an extreme spread of 11 feet per second. It is certainly fair to say that this AMP Mark II regulator is doing its job and doing it very well. That 791 average equates to about 30.6 foot pounds of energy. So plenty of pop for small game and you could probably reach out definitely a little further than the 45 yards on that small game with that kind of energy. So all around great stuff from the DRS. All right, friends, let's wrap up the FX DRS Classic here in the 22 caliber. Overall, obviously, there's a lot to like. For $1,000, give or take, depending on the version of the gun you're buying, uh, the, the Classic makes a lot of sense for a lot of uses, in my opinion. This is kind of a pull it out of the box and go shoot it gun from FX, and largely we haven't seen that in the past. It, you know, most FX guns are highly tunable, highly adjustable to give you whatever you want. And the DRS is a bit of a departure from that. This is a gun that you're gonna pick up, mount your scope, load your pellets, go shoot. And uh, I kind of like that especially as the maybe new entry price point from the brand. This is a very cool platform. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned before, there is some controversy, I suppose, about the look of the gun. But if the look of the gun isn't for you, you go get one that is. It's pretty simple. Uh, but overall, can't deny the performance. Triggers great. Side lever smooth. Accuracy is obviously there. Shot count is going to vary by air cylinder length, barrel length, all of those things. But we know those smooth twist liners shoot. Like this is all standard FX in a little bit of a different package, and I like it a lot. Don't know what you guys think. You're gonna let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hit us with a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, hit us with a like anyway, because we appreciate it, and we'll keep putting out awesome air gun content. Share this with your friends, and if you're not already, please subscribe. We appreciate the support a ton. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. We'll see you next time.